Hi, I'm Karen McNeil, and welcome to WineSpeed.com's People to Know, insider interviews with the most important and fascinating people in the wine business. And today we're here with Tim Lovett, who is the winemaker, the senior winemaker for Lewin Estate in the far Margaret River of Australia. So, Tim, welcome. And today, uh, you know, of course, you're known for your work at Lewin, but what was your first job in the wine industry? Ooh. Um, it was actually really early on. It was actually a work experience when I was uh, at school, which is um, St. Peter's College in, in Adelaide, where um, it was quite close to the Barossa, maybe an hour's drive. And um, I had a strong heart and passion for um, wanting to know more about wine, wanting to know more about a product that gives people energy and happiness. And it was at a, a winery called Sepultsfield, which is in Marananga in the Barossa Valley. And my first job was using a wooden paddle to stir the power liqueur tanks and then, or the vats, I should say. And then after that, it was, um, yeah, this, the smell, the people, the energy behind it, that's where it really was the stimulus and the catalyst. Oh my goodness, but Sepult's one of the great historic mm. wineries of the new world and Para, I, I can smell that in yeah. my mind right now. That is heavenly. 100 year old para liqueur. Oh my gosh. That's a, <laughs> a, and is it, it's based on Muscat, is it? Yeah, more yes. or less. Yeah. Oh so my God. Blend. So fantastic. So, how old were you when you uh, tasted your first wine and who gave it to you? Uh, tasting was probably more in the early teens, but smelling was all the way from kind of four, five, six, and just being intoxicated by. That's probably not the right <laughs> word, but um, um, having the energy from, from the aroma. Yeah. yeah, but and your parents let you smell wine. Yeah, so we had a lot of family friends involved in the industry through Adelaide Hills and um, also in the Barossa and McLaren Barrel as well. So there was a, there was a strong connection and tie right. um, throughout the regions um, yeah. in South Australia. That's where I was brought up. Right. Now, you've been quoted as saying that the problem with unoaked Chardonnay is that it's unoaked. Okay, you have got to explain that. Okay, so um, from, you've done research on that. <laughs> um, Chardonnay has the ability to be wonderfully aged with phenolic structure, both fruit and also with oak. Um, and there is something missing if Chardonnay is not within oak, within oak. It, oak develops texture, it develops complexity, um, and it adds to the wine to create uh, a wine which has volume and capacity, um, not just purity and, and fragrance, which it is known for, but, but oak can really build the layers behind that, and especially looking at particular coopers from, from Burgundy and, and, and also mm. Bordeaux as well, um, provides a, a finite structure with um, uh, Beautiful spice overall. So, so they don't leave, don't let you into Chablis, then I guess. Um, um, I've been to Chablis a few times. Uh -huh. <laughs> Wearing the T-shirt that says the problem with our oak chardonnay yeah. is that it's not oak. No, I wouldn't say that. Yeah. But, but a lot of a, a lot of Chablis though is actually fermented and matured in in oak, la larger larger oak volume. Yeah, yeah. Um, a larger format. But, but surely, would, would, you, would you argue that a wine cannot be over-oaked? Uh, surely there, there are... There are over-oaked Chardonnay, yes, without, okay. without doubt. But yeah. if, you, if you have the um, ability, knowledge-wise and budget, to be able to hand-select and walk through the, the forest mm. um, and to see how one forest is, is slow-growing, which will give you a tighter grain to one that is quicker growing that will give you a larger grain and the diligent toasting level and to be able to pair that to individual parcels of Chardonnay, not just Chardonnay as a whole, as right. a tier, which is where our art series is or, or Cabernet is, um, but also it, it, it's pigeon paired. Yeah. Well, and I'm, I mean, we have a, your Cabernet here today, but I know Lewin's art series Chardonnay is, does have a lot of oak, but I mean, it's and it's noticeable, but the wine is just so voluptuous. Tell us about the Lewin style in general. For, for Art Series Chardonnay, so it's based upon um, some of the original plantings of Chardonnay in Margaret River. So whilst everyone was, or other producers um, and, and friends were planting out the Cabernet um, or Bordelais red varietals and white varietals, um, 
Dennis and Tricia, the owners of, of Lewin Estate under the mentorship of Robert Mondavi, um, planted Chardonnay. And the, the big key point with um, that was with Vine Age and, and Clone, um, we have this beautiful purity and clarity. Mm. Um, so it's, it's um, power and elegance um, combined with finesse um, and this kind of beautiful mineral thread and mm. laced acidity that runs through. So it's a combination of sight, um, vine age, um, and then nurturing that in, mm. in the winery as well. Now, when were those vines planted, though? Are you talking about the 70s, the no, 80s? 1975. 1975, yeah, the, yeah. So there were the original vines planted on the estate, along with um, Cabernet, which is what we're looking at today. Right. Um, and uh, Riesling as well. Mm -hmm. So, and yeah, the, men the mentor was Robert Mondavi for the Horgan family. Very, very, uh, very cool. Now, you just mentioned minerality in, um, in your art series, Chardonnay. Um, you know, the soils in the Margaret River are yep. very, very special. And so to, to what do you uh, attribute that, um, or where do you think that minerality comes from? Is it, is it winemaking? Is it soil? It's, it's, uh, it's not winemaking, so great wines are grown and not mm. made. But um, the, the soil in Margaret River um, is pre-Cambrian, so the bedrock is 750 million years old. Mm. And then in the tertiary era or period, um, that was uh, washed away and that's left us with beautiful um, lateritic iron rich gravel. Um, so uh, the soils are free draining, so that gravel is, is laced more or less throughout the region um, on sand or on, on loam, which is what we have. Um, so it creates a soil structure for the vine that is, is not too vigorous. So um, that's really important that we have balanced yield and balanced canopy, otherwise if we have two fertile soils, um, things sure. can um, yeah. have uh, yeah, more, more yield or, or more canopy overall. Yeah. You know, I think uh, when I think of the Margaret River, I, I think of it as sort of the, the wine region even lots of um, passionate wine people have yet to get to, right? Because it's <laughs> so far away. It's, it's so the awesome. other side of the world. Yeah, it is indeed. Um, so what is it about the character of the wines there that people sort of should know, that you would want to tell someone to sort of get them to come and really experience it? Well, what, what you just touched on there before, we are so isolated, we are so unique and remarkable. So take Perth um, as a capital city of Western Australia, essentially um, one of the most isolated cities in the world. We are another three and a half hours drive south of that surrounded by the Indian and the Southern Ocean. So the, um, the estate, Lewin Estate, where we sit is um, maybe in miles. We're looking at about six to seven miles from the Indian Ocean, which is a really cool buffering breeze. And then um, the Southern Ocean as well, which is even cooler again. And then, then we're heavily influenced by a southwesterly um, wind pattern coming off the, off the Antarctic. So it's cooling. And I think what that really gives rise to is wines that have, because of the vintage conditions, great consistency. Mm -hmm. um, overall, we don't, uh, we're not pressured by um, weather events. So 80% of our rainfall falls outside of the growing season. Um, so there's very little impact of disease pressure or, or that type of thing. And, and from there, we don't really have, because we are Mediterranean climate and maritime influence, um, we, we have this kind of great consistency from, mm. from vintage to vintage. So it's symmetry and consistency and also gives rise to, to Cabernet as well, which um, loves sun. So we open up the canopy a lot as well, but to get those beautiful ripe tannins um, as a thread through, but um, has a vibrancy and acidity that really runs through as a thread. Mm. And, and do you think that the appreciation for acidity and freshness especially in red wine, is, is increasing? I mean, that's a word that 20 years ago, you didn't hear people talk about freshness and acidity in red wine, right? People, yeah. people talked about structure and tannin and yeah. uh, more of the, I don't know, for lack of a better term, the yang aspects of Cabernet. I think that to, to really focus on Cabernet here, the, be the beautiful aspect um, Variety about Cabernet is a, is a dark fruit spectrum, but mm. it's the aromats, it's the it's the profile that really um, elevates 
um, those dark fruit spectrums, so it's like bay leaf or lavender or those beautiful kind of Indian spice notes. Um, I think where we are um, being surrounded by the, the three oceans, um, the Lewin Estate art series Cabernet is about energy and vitality. We, we are able to um, open up the canopy with hand leaf removal, get the solarisation onto the fruit zone to get physiologically right tannins, which are structural, without foregoing because of the the maritime influence, mm -hmm. the, the energy and vitality that we have and, and, and high natural acidity, which not only ensures that um, on, on release Art Series Cabernet is spectacular, but is is very confident um, in, in 20 years of bottle yeah, age thereafter. Yeah, it helps aging, right. Yeah. Right, so is it fair? I mean, I've heard people compare Margaret River as Cabernet as being much more like Bordeaux than it is like Washington State or yeah. Napa Valley, or would, does, that care, does that comparison make sense to you? Yeah, so the, there were research papers um, in 1965 and 1966 by a gentleman by the name of Dr. John Gladstones, who was an agricultural scientist um, based um, in, in WA at the time, and he earmarked Margaret River as having um, a synergy or with, with Bordeaux and, and a symmetry and a likeness. And it was based on three key features. It was the, the free draining soils that we have, which is basically on the lateritic iron rich gravel. It was the influence of the two oceans, um, Indian mm -hmm. and Southern, and it was the heat summation. So the accumulated growing temperatures um, that we have, which is just slightly warmer to that of Bordeaux. And then from there, um, the first Cabernet vines were planted in 1967 in, in the Margaret River region. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that um, overall having that balance and symmetry between dark fruit profile and the aromats is, is definitely akin to um, Bordeaux at a fraction of the cost. <laughs> at a fraction of the cost. <laughs> Good point. Um, and so, Tim, before I let you go, um, What's the most exciting thing happening in the Australian wine industry today, would you say? Oh, oh, maybe not looking at the Australian wine industry as such, but maybe looking at the estate. Um, we've been planting out more and more uh, vineyards. So um, in the last four years, we've planted out another 30 hectares because we've worked upon soil and, and, and structure and, and site. And that's really exciting for us. Um, that's our, our next chapter. Um, I think looking at the, the greater landscape for, for Australia, I, I think that the most important thing um, is to know the, the subtle nuances between each region as well. And I, that's one of the reasons why we're over here um, in the beautiful United States is, is to really focus on regional aspects and mm. to understand why Margaret River Cabernet Sauvignon is, is different to um, McLaren Vale Cabernet Sauvignon. They, they both possess uh, a different personality, a different DNA, and that comes from the environment and the soil and, um, and also the philosophy of the producer as well. Yeah. So it's, I think it's that distinction between, it's not Australia as a, as a collative whole, it's regionality and being able to yeah. um, articulate the language behind yeah. that. Very important point um, because of course no one would say oh, it's a United States wine, and assume that a New Correct. York wine had anything in comparison with yeah. a Napa Valley wine. But with Australia, we forget that it's, you know, laid over the United States. It's actually a larger place. It's a whole continent. It's a, it's a really pivotal key message. Yeah. That it's not just a, yeah, it, it, even within Napa, like there's, there's, there's so many different nuances between something in the mountains to, to, to somewhere on the flats and right. they portray different um, pedigree and, and characteristics yeah. throughout. Yeah. So. so Tim, I, I know I said that was the last question, but one more actually. Um, so what characteristic do you think you possess that has allowed you to be a successful winemaker? Within Cabernet? Well, in, in, in every wine. What, is it, what, what character trait do you possess? So I'd look at the site first. So my, my passion is to translate and purvey the site. 
-hmm. into the glass. Mm -hmm. And that will take on a varietal expression, but most importantly, it's to showcase sense of place. So um, as a senior winemaker of Lewin Estate, it's, a, it's about being able to articulate that and to produce wines which have energy and vitality and this, um, this brightness and liveliness where mm -hmm. you, they're, they're wines that really take you on a journey um, mm -hmm. throughout. And then there, there are wines, especially within the art series, which is a celebration of our finest varietals that we have um, to, to, to live for, for 20 plus years. So, um, yeah, with that, it's about, yeah, enjoyment for, for people that drink our wines. All right. Thank you, Tim. Well, our complete interview with Tim Lovett is on winespeed.com's People to Know page. Check it out. You'll really like it.